I'll do the pose. Okay, make some funny one-liners real quick to get yourself started right. and get ready. Make sure you're feeling they, good. They call me Lefty, Pimple the Limp. Uh, like I just found out I'm half millennial because, you know, it doesn't work. Uh, let's see, we're out here at uh, Paradise. What better place to be retired on a Saturday and Sunday at the age of 34? So I'm um, with my good friend Terry Barker. Good man, everything I'm not. Right-handed, likes to cook. And uh, hello, 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 hello. There we go. And we got we got monster juice. Uh, you know, I brought to you by Breast Cancer Awareness. Plus, the kiwi is quite delicious. I gotta say, this is uh, good stuff. Pipeline punch can't go wrong. It's where the elite meet to eat. There you go. There you go. I'm Boomer T. I'm here with my good friend, my favorite one-arm golfer. That In should fact, he's down. my only one-arm golfer that I know. So <laughs> we wanted to get together. Uh, Casey's a, a wonderful golfing partner. And we just wanted to talk to him a little bit about uh, golf and what he enjoys about it. So, well, first of all, Casey, when did you start playing golf? Great question. Thanks, Terry. I actually started playing golf in my ninth grade year of high school, the day I was cut from my baseball team. We were a baseball family. That's and right. His, his dad was a phenomenal baseball player. Casey was a phenomenal baseball player. Yep. And as we all know, we kids grow up, and I played little league all the way through. And then when kids were making that big jump into playing you know at the next level i was falling behind a little bit coach thanked me for trying out and i told my dad that day after church after church after school and he said well i think it's now to pursue golf full time so we went and bought a six iron and a seven wood okay and i take it it was your dad who taught you golf it was yep he's a good man not here today gotta love him god and i love him in that order and, and his dad is also a great golfer. We've played golf many, many times, not only Casey and I, but his dad also. Um, what is it that you love about golf? Mm. Golf for me, you're outdoors, you're breathing in the fresh air, you're only playing against yourself. Uh, so which means you only have yourself to blame for those bad shots. What I like most about golf is that it's going to challenge you. It's not over in one quarter, it's not over in a half of half a game. 18 holes, you against yourself, clubs, ball, flag, and make the best of it. Yeah. Okay, besides me, who's your favorite golfer? Ah, uh, that, that has to go to John Rahm. John, John Rahm, John, wow. John well, Rahm. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. Australian, I believe. Uh, no, actually, I think, isn't John Rahm uh, South American? Is or is he South? Spain? Might be Spain. Who knows? He's he, a golfer. That's all that matters. <laughs> he's friends with Larry Fitz, who's one of my top wide receivers. Now, in the is game. he one of those that went over to the LIV? I don't think he Not did, okay. but I know yeah, others I, did. I think is, a lot of them are going that way, and which I think is good for the sport. We'll see. Yeah, yeah it's it's interesting. So that's um, that's next week's episode. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me reclarify. We've been talking. Uh, John Rom is and will remain my favorite golfer, but uh, quick clarification: not Australian. He is in fact from Spain. So uh, John, if you ever catch this, uh, I'd love to take you on in a scramble one day. Just spot me about 19 strokes aside, and it should be interesting. <laughs> Okay, when it comes to golf, what is your greatest memory on the golf course? Greatest memory? Well, there's there's too many to show. You know, I, I think over the years I've played with some very interesting people and some very fun people. And I think what I enjoy most is seeing the look on their face when they see someone like myself with a disability out there trying hard and getting better. And it's bringing amusement and also bringing laughs as well. I'm, I'm a comedian as well. And, and, and just so you know, we, we were out here at this golf course last week and there was a, a gentleman with three <laughs> young kids and they stood there in awe and watched you swing with one arm. They're out there trying to learn it with two hands and here you are swinging one arm and they were just like <laughs> in amazement. I, I'm in amazement when I watch you swing with swing a club myself. So Thank you, Terry. Terry's one of my biggest supporters. Well, my, my famous tagline on the driving range is I look at someone hitting the ball and they come up to me and they say, wow, that's amazing. And I said, look, I don't know how you play this game with two hands. Just too much can go wrong. Too much. <laughs> so, you know, less can go wrong. One he sees hand. it a little bit different than we do. There you go. <laughs> no, so, okay, speaking of your swing, you have a different swing compared to most one-arm golfers. Tell us about it. Yeah, so... Uh, to anyone in the one-arm golf community, there's uh, we call it forehanded or backhanded. I play forehanded, left hand, left-handed, and the reason for it is because I st I grew up playing baseball and batted left-handed, and I was one step closer to first base. But just the natural golf swing, in my opinion, is to have your body behind the swing at follow-through. When you're forehand, yes, it's I, there, there's those golfers that hit it more consistently and they're straighter. 
but I feel like you lose a lot of distance. And not to show both, but not to also be a representative for one-arm golfing, but you, you need those distance. You need the distance off the tee. So and, I think forehand it provides and that. I gotta tell you, there's been many a times on the golf course where Casey has outdriven me yeah. by quite a distance. So um, so kudos to that. <laughs> uh, thankfully, it's only taken a decade to outdrive Terry B, but when we first started, this guy, uh, he gave me something to lay up to. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, who, who do you enjoy playing golf with the most? Besides you. Besides okay, you. besides me. Just in, 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 in general. I think every every son will answer this, but uh, my biggest uh, enjoyment was playing with my dad ah. growing up. You know, he, he got me cool. into the game. He provided the uh, experience. I know I, I got a nine-year-old now. I was turned nine-year-old yesterday. And the patience of kids taking up the game, which is awesome for the sport. But my dad got me into the game. And playing against him, who was my only competitor for a long time, when I finally beat him that moment, uh, to any son out there knows this, it's a special day. Very cool, yeah. very cool. Tell us a little bit about your, your, your history. Um, we understand that you had a, a medical episode that uh, kind of put you in the situation you are now. Yeah, so very similar to a stroke, um, those in the medical field, but I swing the club with my left hand, left-handed uh, only. And at a young age, at the age of six, I was diagnosed with an astrocytoma grade one brain tumor. Now, it wasn't cancerous technically because it was, it was grown in the brain, but um, it left me, there was a bleed during the surgery which caused the paralysis. And uh, after following that surgery, I have a limp and I wear an AFO and ankle foot orthotic on my right leg. But we are, um, I grew up playing golf since ninth grade with one hand. And uh, thankfully, growing up, uh, which came from the disability, is the surgery was performed in Children's Hospital in Washington, D.C. And resulting from that, I got to take part in lots of fundraising from Children's Hospital, their once a year telethon called the Children's Miracle Network. I was actually, uh, thankfully, the 2000 millennial champ for Washington, D.C., um, which, and then I, I did several radiothons uh, throughout my, my years as a young teen. And it was just a tremendous opportunity to speak my story in front of large audiences and raise money for such a great cause. So thanks to Children's Hospital to this day, I'm, I'm here, I'm alive, and I have the great um, less resulting consequence from, God forbid, a, a fatal uh, brain tumor. Any, any goals for your golf game? Uh, <laughs> improvement. Uh. <laughs> yes, uh, to anyone that knows me, I, I was always um, chipping around the range. Right now, what I'm working on is my my drivers to, to, to be straighter. I'm, I'm about 240 to 250, depending on the roll, off the tee, and getting my irons to the greens and putting for birdie. But up until, up until a good driver that I just bought recently, uh, I've had to chip from anywhere from 50 to 70 yards. <laughs> so, as, we, as we all know in the golf business, um, yes, uh, uh, chipping anything around the green will improve your game tremendously. So yeah, always stick with that as much as you can. They don't call me Ricochet Rabbit for nothing. I use the trees as allies. <laughs> yeah. Okay, what's your lowest golf score ever? I've had it three on different occasions, 82. Very good, very good. Way to go. Thank you, Terry. Okay, Casey, yeah. any closing thoughts on the uh, wonderful game of golf? Absolutely. Uh, to quote the late Jimmy V uh, at the ESPYs uh, several years ago, don't give up, don't ever give up. A lot of us have disabilities in this world. Some of them you can see, some of them you can't see. But whatever your obstacles in life, find a way to overcome it and be the best version of yourself because that's all anyone can ask. Hey man. So if you ever get a chance to see Casey out on the golf course, say hi to him. If you get a chance to play with him, play with him. The guy is just a great guy to be around. It's funny as I'll get out. He'll keep you laughing. That's how he beats you on the golf course. He gets you laughing so much that you forget about golf and then he comes and beats you on the golf course. So <laughs> two, two rights don't make it wrong, but two rights made an airplane. So and, and, and just so you know, here's the only way I can beat Casey at arm wrestling. There you go. <laughs> yeah. His right hand against my left hand. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Casey. Love you, buddy. Hey. All right, buddy. Great talking to you, Terry. Thank you, my friend. See you out there. Now, here's the good question. Yeah. Did I push the play button? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I already deal with one dimension. <laughs> I don't see any light, by the way. <laughs>
We're gonna play golf today, bud. All right, we are yeah, where we left off, and <laughs> Terry's calves were just as big as they were 12 years ago. So, a little bit yeah. of nostalgia, by the way, Casey. Check it out. Oh my goodness. Check this look, out. Look at some throwback here. Jeez, you got great to see you, man. Good to great see you, bud. Now, it's a hot one today. You got some water? Uh, not yet. Oh. Well, that's good. Uh, well, it should Giant be good. I'm going to be doing a video with you one of these days, so I'm going to get some of this stuff ahead of time, so oh, we'll the, do some things. The before shot. Yeah. yeah, we'll do some good stuff together, I, man. Hey! I, I can suck in the gut, but I can't tuck the double chin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to be the one sucking in the gut, bro. <laughs> well, I picked up cornhole during the whole pandemic. I know, yeah. And uh, I'm on a four-man team called Dad Bods. Well, <laughs> <laughs> we're definitely, I'm going to have to go to one of those... Uh, Tournaments and stuff and get you on video there too. Oh, we got to do it. We'll do a whole bunch of stuff together, man. Cool. Yeah, well, you see, and I haven't done comedy in so long that I can still use all my original material and the world's never seen it. There you go. Yeah, I'm right. loving it. Sounds good. <laughs> we're, we're cooking down to the putting green now to show everybody that we know how not to putt. Yeah. But we'll, we'll do better on the golf course, of course, you know, because that's what they call it the course, of course. Exactly. <laughs> Pe people make more money off the books what not to do than what to do. <laughs> For sure. And my boy Blue, we got a green. How'd you know she was the one? <laughs> she told me. Casey, I can't remember. Did we shoot under par on that nine or not? No, we, we had a better chance shooting underground than under par. <laughs> How about I shot par on every, every hole, yeah. but I had to count the extra strokes and that all of a sudden made it like uh, way over par. If you're, if you're considering that we played under par, how'd you do on that nine? Uh, pretty good considering I don't even know what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> I mean, riding the cart. Yay, we had yeah. fun though. That's all that's important. Well, that was all that was fun. There we go. You can't get better people than TB right here. Yay, Casey TB. And TB. Right. Best two arm golfer I know. <laughs> <laughs> and the only one arm golfer I know. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, we're off to a good start. Back nine, we're both in something called a fairway. So, that's right. Know, we'll give it a turn. We'll yeah. see what we can do here. There we go. How was that shot, Casey? Oh, that's that's what you call a greeny. Little long, little long. Better than my uh, Samsung. What's these guys here? Hey. The original selfie. Greeny, man. <laughs> and I don't know this guy. This name's Casey, <laughs> Casey, if I remember right. You know it, man. This is a flashback 10 years, baby. I love it. Yeah. I love it, man. <laughs> yourself to the left because the wind will shoot the pee off over your shoe which you don't want in the, in the back nine I'm telling you the pee was a dog leg right well <laughs> yes but i changed it good old pat here dynamite drop in that broadcasting school really paid off that's funny <laughs> <laughs> Which what was on tape? It was a bone. The fact that you shot 68. Yeah. <laughs> well, we oh. stopped after the 13th hole. 62, I quit after nine. <laughs> <laughs>